Hey, welcome back to the God's Honest Truth. Now look, I spent my entire childhood reading textbooks written by white men that diminish the presence, influence, and power of my people, black people. And if I can do anything to change that experience for the next generation, I will. So tonight's guest has a different future in mind, maybe, for our kids. She's an elected community education council member, running for city council in the first district of New York City. She's a public defender, a Democrat, and she's anti-critical race theory. Everyone, welcome Maud Marin. How are you, Maud? Good, thanks. Thank you for joining us. Uh, also, I've got a guy who's simply listed as comedian, okay? Jordan Carlos, who has kids. <laughs> Jordan has kids in New York public schools. Now, now, Maude, you're anti-critical race theory. What, what's your vision for what kids should be learning? And so let me say, I'm an attorney. Critical race theory as a legal theory, that, that race is a lens through which people can look at and analyze different structures and systems, mm -hmm. makes plenty of sense. Of course you can look at things. You can look at, I'm a criminal defense attorney. You can look at the criminal justice system through the lens of race and see a lot that's wrong and a lot that needs to be fixed. The way that critical race theory has been going into the K through 12 school system, at least as I've observed it, um, has not been healthy or good for our kids. And it's been um, divisive and it's been false a lot of the times, right? There are, there are. Um, but I'm curious, what's, what's false? What is, what's false about, yeah. What, what's false is the idea that. Or an example of a falsehood. Okay, is that all, um, sort of power and privilege can be identified and understood through skin color. Through skin color, right. right. So like, maybe like the three-fifths compromise. Well, how about the fact that we can look at... Uh, but what about three-fifths compromise? Well, <laughs> what about it's 2021, right? Uh, but and about like this... compromise? The, the, that, uh. So... But let's not escape the fact that the three-fifths compromise is a thing, you know, that, that, uh, that Jim Crow is a thing, that, that these all add up, uh, you know, on a timeline to, to, to outcomes that, like, that create uh, maybe like better outcomes for white people and worse ones for black people. Of course. I mean, no, who, there's not a person in this room, myself included, right. who would deny the horror of slavery in this country or any other country. The Three-Fifths Compromise is the least of it. There are so many awful chapters in this country where you can see yeah. racism at play doing horrible things. There's also anti-Semitism and homophobia and sexism historically and presently. Like right. all of that exists. I'm not denying it for a second, but the way we teach our children, right, about the history of our country, including everything that's wrong, should also include everything that's right. And the fact Could that- Could you tell we... us what's right for black people? <laughs> or just, I... or, 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 or do this. It shouldn't what, be that hard to what, answer. What, what, let's do this. What, what, what pedagogy then? Because this is the thing I, I've always been fascinated by with anti-CRT. It's like what we're against, but I've never seen the vision for what you're for. What's your vision? Well, <laughs> let them have their clap. Jordan, so, Jordan, please. Jordan. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm also not running for anything. I'm just a dad. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I'm, I, I am curious about that. Yeah, so, but to answer, that's two questions. So let me answer your question. What's right? You, like, look at your life. Don't look do at your that. success. We, we like look to pull at your... up. We like, to, we like to point at one successful black person and that, say, you, you are know, the only successful black person you know. No, Come I'm on not. now. There's lots of successful black people in this country. There are people of every race, of, of, of both sexes. I'm the of... exception, not the rule. <laughs> Jordan, would you like to run down some of the rules they've used to hold black people down? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean that, that is, I mean, he is a shining black example, right? But, but, but shining. like, yeah. Well, <laughs> well we've, we've powdered him a little right. bit. But, um, <laughs> but, but, but the point is, yes, uh, still in all, you know, uh, people of color, black people experience, you know, uh, a, a, a reality that, that is just beset with, with obstacles that, that their white counterparts to this day do not experience, right? So even if it's, I mean, if it's, if it's like, Take for example, like take for example, like the wealth gap. Like mm -hmm. it takes it takes 287 years for the average black family to catch up with the average white family. Why? Because mm -hmm. after World War II, you had like the you know the the, the uh, what was it the oh my God the GI Bill, which right. gave you know gave uh, home loans more readily to mm -hmm. to white soldiers coming mm -hmm. home from the war than black soldiers. Right mm -hmm. now, think about that. You get a home, that means you get wealth. You can build off that wealth, right? right. Over time, 
black people, yes, we had right. wages, but we didn't have wealth, right? right? So it, like, it puts you at a disadvantage. Do you see what I'm saying? A hundred percent. Do you retort? All, all of that is true, and all of that should be taught, right? But there's but also the fact that yeah. like the MacArthur you know, Genius Grants were just announced, and there are an extraordinary number of talented, smart, successful people doing amazing work, black people across an array of fields that are being acknowledged and recognized, and that's a great thing. And that's happening in this country of ours that you're having trouble acknowledging is a place where black success can be acknowledged and celebrated. Okay, so but what is like, your argument what's about, your argument then? You know, not having critical race theory in schools? My argument is pretty simple when it comes to what I've seen in our classroom, which is that we should teach history accurately, and that includes all the things that have gone wrong and all the things that have gone right in this country. Right. Yeah, and I say I have a five-year-old at home right now. I have I a five-year-old at home. Yeah. Well, they could play together, and do you think they would spend a lot of time obsessing about each other's skin color? My, what my son does do is notice. He does notice difference. And that's totally okay to notice difference in America. They, I'm not trying to keep that from him. It's not like... It's not like a Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. He's gonna run up against it. And it's totally fine that he learns that this country, this very island mm -hmm. that we're sitting on, mm -hmm. was taken by colonization, conquest, and extermination. Because where is, where else? I mean, it might not be, a, it's an uncomfortable that, truth. It's an uncomfortable truth. It's not an uncomfortable truth. It's okay, the so reality of our, like, so teaching why are we kids so afraid America. Of why are we so afraid to tell them this? I am not this? remotely afraid of teaching our kids an accurate history. Of course we should. But that's not, but, but being obsessed with, um, with, <laughs> with, with, with it's focusing not, it's on that. It's, but it's not, I, I don't think it's, I, I love history. I married a history teacher. <laughs> Maybe it is an obsession. Right. Because, you know, the thing about history is people experience, um, uh, you know, they experience moments in history in different ways. What happens, we, we can't experience a moment in history the same way, mm -hmm. right? If it's from the people's perspective or from the great man perspective or from the lens of women's role in history, you mm -hmm. know, these are all different ways to talk about a certain event. Agreed. And we should have kids, especially as you're older and you're in high school, you should be able to... Um, have kids bring those different perspectives, right. talk about it. You should read authors who bring in those different perspectives. That's a good thing, right? But what we get, look, I took a, a two-day training class by the Department of Education as part of my um, sitting on the school council. And it was a two-day seminar dedicated to talking about everything that's horrible about white culture. I don't really, I didn't really- Only two days? <laughs> Word. <laughs> <laughs> Only two? Let me, let me ask you a question. If, 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 if racism should not be discussed in the classroom because it's unnecessary. Who says that? I don't you, think, I think you're getting in elementary school. Racism. I think you're talking about elementary school K through 12. So you think it's unnecessary in elementary school? Well, certainly I don't think we should tell children to look at each other at, and focus on their differences in elementary See, school. See, once again, that's a, that's a conversation white people don't have to have with their black children. Like, I have to sit there and have conversations with my kids about the fact that they will be treated differently because of the color of their skin in certain situations. Mm -hmm. There's also, I mean, there's also, I think there's also valuable lessons to learn, right? Like, I mean, we're talking about Haiti, right? We're talking about how, the way Haitians are treated. And mm -hmm. I mean, like, for me, I think it's really important to, to learn what we owe the Haitians. You know, mm -hmm. that they're a big part of American history. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, would you, would you, like, uh, go ahead, please. Would you switch places with a random black person in America? Yeah. She, 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 she said, <laughs> okay. okay. That's, that's, that's. I, I don't think there's any way for me to answer that question. Why? That would, be, no. would you want to switch places with me? Absolutely not, I love being black. Right, but, I, I, but here's the thing. Yeah. You can say that, and if I said that, I would be called a racist for saying that. I ain't gonna lie, your mouth said it all. Right around here, you, you, you there was, there was some, was, yeah. That, because I know that there's no way to answer that question that's not gonna be um, used to, to feed a narrative. People know, people already know. White people know, they, they do. They, they, if they're, they're like, <laughs> they know they don't wanna, with a, ve with a very I small thought, list of people, including Will see, Smith, Obama, Serena <laughs> Williams, Oprah. Oprah, Beyonce, they probably don't wanna switch places with a random black person. There seems to be a monolithic reaction to putting black people at the center of the narrative. There's not one when it comes to like feminist theory or maybe Chicano history or that, uh, or that of the Native American plight.
But the reaction, it seems, to black people feels a little, well, reactionary. Yeah, I mean, as, though, there, as yeah. though there's no time for it, or we need to get over it. Or, yeah, I mean, know? if we taught kids, you know, that the founding fathers owned slaves, that's the mm -hmm. truth, right? You teach women couldn't vote till the 20th century, right? That's the truth. So how is one fact valid and the other, you know, unjustful? But didn't you know growing up, I certainly knew growing up, and I think I'm older than you, that the founding fathers owned slaves, right? Yeah. Like, I didn't, it wasn't, critical race theory wasn't being taught or discussed in the same way um, when I was going to elementary school or high school, but that fact didn't escape my notice. Or, or yeah, it, it was a bit whitewashed. And, and I grew up in Texas, right? So mm -hmm. I basically, what I had to do was outsource my understanding mm -hmm. of this country, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, for instance, when you talk about understanding that the founding fathers uh, did own slaves, mm -hmm. I wasn't taught that. Mm -hmm. You're sold, more or less, you're sold a myth. You're sold the big man theory. Mm -hmm. You're sold idealism. Mm -hmm. to, to, to really get down to the granular and have, like, a cognitive dissonance that, yes, this is a great country that black people still have mm -hmm. not turned their back on, and yet it has committed atrocities, genocidal mm -hmm. atrocities. They've only stolen the land that they're on, mm -hmm. right? And yet I call it home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That can reside in me mm -hmm. without making me ill at ease, mm -hmm. yeah. and I can learn that as a child. Now, if, if I don't learn that, that sounds like conformity and uniformity and... and, and and an inability for a child to think critically. Mm -hmm. So I think... Wouldn't look, you agree? I would agree with you that all the things you're talking about, about the complexity, about understanding what's wrong and what's right in, in the country you live in, and the fact that it's your home, that you can be proud of things about your yeah. country while also being critical, I agree with you on all of that. I think it's like a touch disingenuous to suggest that people who are criticizing ways in which critical race theory ideas have impacted K through 12 education, that, 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 cr that those critics are trying to um, whitewash history or trying to prevent the teaching of history because I only hear that coming from people who want to silence CRT's critics, right? Because I've never heard people who are saying, I'm concerned about critical race theory in schools saying, so let's not teach about slavery. Right? I don't hear that. I don't hear that at all from people. What I do hear people saying right. is, stop trying to propagandize children to tell them that the only way to look at their peers is through a lens of race. We didn't invent that lens of race, though. We, but we, yeah, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't invent the lens of race. I mean, the lens of race st started back with, that, that started back with the, the Spanish Inquisition and talking about pure blood yeah. versus not pure blood. Yeah, I don't you think know, we'll like, ever get to... Uh, we didn't do it. We'll, we'll never get the real solutions in this country if we keep lying about the problems. But, you know, Maude, it was, it was very interesting to meet you. <laughs> it was That's really it? nice to meet you. That's it? That's all? <laughs> America, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>